folks. Uh, I'm Maria, the product manager with the CPQ for HubSpot team. And today I'm going to show you five basic rules that might cover most of your quoting and discounting needs. Let's start. For the purposes of this tutorial, I have created several data fields in my quote. The product field contains the SKU of a product. Contract duration is a number and discount is a number as well. And we are going to be sending the contract duration uh, for the product from this uh, data field. And we are going to be sending the discount amount also uh, using these quote data fields. So let's set contract duration to three and discount to 15 and save the, the values of those quote data fields. Usually the information will come to quote data fields from a form or an integration in scope of a workflow. The first rule is going to be adding a product to the quote by an SKU. Let's get to work. Let's go into rules and create our very first rule. So in our quote, you have two sections, products and services. And when adding a product by SKU, we are going to be choosing firstly a section to add this product to. So in actions, I'm choosing add to sections called products, an existing product by SKU. And here we have an input field and I'm using an opening square bracket to refer to a data field. And in the dropdown, I select the name of this particular data field that is product that contains our SKU. As you see by this hint, we are not creating duplicates when adding a product. This means that this rule will fire only once and make sure that the section called products only contains one product with this SKU. And if you want this rule to create duplicates, you need to select this option, but we are not selecting it and adding a product only once. saving the rule and let's go and test it. Let's go back to the build tab of our quote and run rules. By the way, rules run um, on every update of the quote. So whether you're choosing one of the attributes of your product or any other fields, the run rules will recalculate. If you haven't changed anything but want to apply your rules in you, you need to press this button. So quantity one, I'm changing it and rules are applying, but we still only have one product in this section. Next rule, the second rule is going to be applying the contract term, contract duration from a data field. So what we need to do is to insert whatever value is in this data field into the contract term of our pro plan subscription. Now let's go and write this rule. We're going to be applying this rule to all the elements in the product section. Right now I have one product, but if I ever had several, I will apply the same subscription duration to all of them. So let's start. We are going to be blanket grabbing all of the line items in our quote. So let's, uh, let's write a so-called blanket statement. Line items contain elements with name that is not empty. It will effectively grab all of our line items in all of the sections of our quote. And then we are going to be updating line items one. This is our alias from the left part and we're going to be setting their contract term as before from a quote data field square bracket contract duration 
Let's save this rule and test it out. Run rules. Contract term is set to 3. Now let's change the contract duration variable. The quote will recalculate automatically. The rule is a success, and now it's time to write our third rule, which is uh, a discount uh, based on the item's contract term. I'm going to add a discount column to the item, and now let's go and write our third rule. Let's write a blanket statement. Line items contain elements with name not empty. This will grab all of the line items in our quote. And then let's update this line items discount. And this is something that we are going to be encountering for the first time in this tutorial. We are getting access to the formulas. You will always see the full list of available formulas uh, by pressing the equal sign inside the input field. This way you get access to the formulas and the formulas are based on the Excel formulas. And in this case, I'm going to need a conditional statement, so I'm using if. And it even prompts me to see uh, the notation of this formula. In our case, I, I'm going to set the rule that if the line item's duration uh, is more than three years, we will give a discount denoted in the quote data field. And this is another new concept that we are only accessing now. We are going to be referencing the current item, which is a, an item that we get when looping through the list of line items we have grabbed in the left part of our rule. So if current item, contract term is more, is more than or equal three, then set the discount percent from the data field, otherwise the discount percent percentage will be zero. And I'm finishing up this formula. This if condition is very interesting in that it will work bidirectionally. So let's see how this works and if this works. Saving this rule. Um, see also that you have rules active status. For example, if one of your rules was incomplete or had erroneous syntax, it will be disabled by default. And when you have amended it, you have to activate it again, which is what I'm doing now. Activating this rule, going into a quote, running rules. So the discount is set up to 10% because the contract term uh, is five years. If we are going to change it, oh, we cannot change it directly because it's guarded uh, by the data field. So let's change it in the data field. So we set the contract duration to two and the discount is removed. We bump it back to five and the discount appears. This is the beauty of the if statement, because of course you could have written this rule in a simple manner. For example, if line items duration is greater than or equal three, set a discount equal to 10, but that would not revert the discount uh, in cases when a sales rep changes the duration uh, to a lower amount. So this is our third rule and it highlights 
both formulas and current item. The fourth rule we are going to write is going to be updating a field in the grand total section. So we have a number of fields that show things like discount fee tax for the entire quote, but sometimes you need to show something concerning, for example, just one of the sections uh, in this grand total section. So for this, we will create a custom field first. For example, in our uh, fictional scenario, we are showing the customer the price before discount for the product section. So I'm going to create a custom field and I'm going to name it product price before discount. And now that we have created this field, we can influence it via rule. So let's go and create our fourth rule. So we have created a rule called calculate custom total. We are filtering the sections and we are filtering only the section called products. This is our first section. And then we are creating another condition for section one line items, name not empty. That is, we are grabbing all of the line items in the first section called products. Now we are going to update we are selecting quote total, and in this quote total dropdown, we only have one field, our custom field. That is because we cannot influence the quote total auto calculated fields with our rules. So, whenever you need to do a special calculation, the quote total, you need to create a separate custom field for it. So, I'm selecting product price before discount. I'm starting with the equal symbol to do a formula. So it's going to be a nested formula. So buckle up. We are starting with sum because we're going to be summarizing all prices of the products in the product section. So we're creating sum. By the way, now we have the reference for all of the formulas and sum takes uh, an array of values as input to calculate the sum of them. And for this, inside the formula, inside the round bracket, I'm opening a square bracket and I'm choosing alias. I'm choosing my line items one. Again, this is all of the line items in the product section. And I'm taking all elements. This way, I'm going to get an array of all of the line items um, in this section all elements and we are getting their price so we are getting a sum of those let's save the rule let's enable this rule let's go into the build tab and run rules and there we have it but if you take a closer look you see that this product price before discount is not formatted in the same way our grand total fields are. So let's add formatting to this field as well. Let's go into our rule and go into product price before discount formula and create and add another nested formula to it. We're going to be using a formula, Excel like formula called text which formats the value you need to look in a special way. So for example, you can give it a date and do a special format. In this case, we are giving it a plain number and we are adding a dollar sign and we are adding a comma after a certain number of digits so that our uh, product price before discount looks just like the other quote total fields. So uh, we are given sum to it. I think it's right. We are entering a comma and now we are going to enter a format we need. In this case, I have pre-saved it. And now we close the bracket 
and I think our formula is ready to go. Let's save it. Let's save the rule, go into build and run it again. Yep, and that's a success. Uh, we see that our product price before discount looks just like we want it to look. And the last type of rule we are going to write is going to be extracting one of the values from our quote into a quote data field to pass it further into subsequent steps of the workflows. In this case, we are going to pass this field into a document. So <clears throat> for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to create uh, a data field. Um, let's call it, I don't know, let's call it selected products. Suppose we want to extract all of the names that of the products that were set in our into our quote and pass them into the document for the conditional content to trigger. This way, in our document, we will have uh, description blocks for all of the items added to the quote. So we have created this new data field called selected products. It's a text. We are saving it. And that's, uh, now let's go and create a rule that extracts all of the values of the selected products into this variable. So again, I've created uh, my fifth rule. I'm grabbing all of the line items with a non-empty name, and I'm updating a variable called selected products with a formula. Uh, this Excel formula is called text join. It takes an array of strings, that is words, and um, combines all of them uh, with a delimiter that we denote. In our case, it's going to be a comma and a space. So let's try to write this rule. We are going to be using comma and space. We are using true here uh, to ignore empty values. So, for example, if one of the names were empty, we would ignore it. And then we're going to give this function an array of all of the line items names. How do we do this? We're going to be using alias line items, all elements, again, name. And I'm using the bracket to close the rule. I'm going to save it, go into the quote, run a rule, and see if something was extracted. And yes, it did. So now we have this data field that contains all of the elements that were selected into our quote. Uh, why would you need to use such rules? So I have a template connected to this workflow that has, for example, a smart content block. And this block is dependent on the selected products variable we have just created. And if this selected variable, uh, select products variable contains onboarding, for example, I'm going to add a special smart content block called pro onboarding with a description of, of what is included in onboarding. This way, we will automatically compose the document of the blocks that are relevant to the recipient. So if they have chosen onboarding, they're going to read about onboarding. Uh, don't forget to go into your workflow and go into the documents tab and map the selected products variable onto the variable from our quote. That's about it for the quote rules from the most basic to not so basic. And um, I'll see you again in the next tutorials.